Hello everyone, welcome to Physics Online Classes for Class 11 students. Today we are going to start a new chapter that is Motion in a Plane. As we have completed the first three chapters, that is Physical World, Units and Measurements and Motion in a Straight Line. The first three chapters we already studied and also we studied the CET questions, CET, JWE, as well as NEAT, multiple choice questions we have studied about the first three chapters. I hope you all understood the first three chapters. Now we are going to start the fourth chapter which is very important chapter in your PUC first year and that is motion in a plane. Today we are going to discuss only the introduction part of this chapter. Now let us start the class. Before going to study about this chapter, first we have to know what are the topics that you are going to study in this chapter. Before that you can observe this chapter is 12 hour chapter and it carries 11 marks in your board examination. So this is very important topic because it carries 11 marks in your board examination. See here 11 marks will be distributed as 5 marks question you will get, 3 marks question plus 2 marks question plus 1 mark question. 5 plus 3 8, 8 plus 2 10, 10 plus 1 is how much? 11. So you will get 5 mark question. Remember that 5 mark question may be theoretical question or that may be numerical problem. Then 3 marks question, 2 mark question and 1 mark question you will get in your annual examination. So totally this chapter carries 11 marks and it, it is a 12 hour chapter. Then what you are going to study in this chapter? The first point 4.1 introduction 4.2 scalars and vectors, 4.3 multiplication of vectors by real numbers, 4.4 addition and subtraction of vectors using graphical method, 4.5 resolution of vectors, 4.6 vector addition that is analytical method we are using, 4.7 motion in a plane, 4.8 motion in a plane with constant acceleration 4.9 relative velocity in two dimensions 4.10 projectile motion and at last 4.11 uniform circular motion these are the topics to be covered in this chapter so today we can start with 4.1 that is introduction. Yes, earlier you learnt about rectilinear motion of the bodies. Rectilinear motion. What do you mean by rectilinear? Rectilinear means straight line. Earlier you learnt about the rectilinear motion of the bodies in simple terms a rectilinear motion is a motion that occurs in a straight line. The motion of the body in a straight line is stated as one dimensional motion. If the object is moving in a straight line, then we can call it as one dimensional motion. Right? So the description of motion of the body here you can observe this picture. The car is moving in a straight line along x-axis we can consider. The car is moving along a straight line. So along a straight line means only one axis. Either x or y or z. That may be moving uh, along x-axis or along y-axis or along z-axis. Anyhow, if a car is moving in a straight line, only one axis we have to consider so we can call it as one dimensional motion. Remember one dimensional, two dimensional, three dimensional. One dimensional means what? Only one axis 
we have to consider two dimensional means we have to consider two axes three dimensional means we have to consider three axes one axis means what either x or y or z two axis means we can consider x y or y z or x z then three dimensional three axis means all the three axis x y z we have to consider if we consider only one axis so we can take it as a straight line rectilinear if there are two axes then we can call it as a plane if there are three axes then we have to call it as a space right straight line means only one axis and we can call it as one dimensional plane two axis two dimensional space three axis three dimensional so here one dimensional motion the motion of a body in a straight line is stated as one dimensional motion you can observe this picture the car is moving along x axis right now we can say that the car is having one dimensional motion or the body is moving in a straight line description of motion of a body involves its position displacement velocity acceleration and time so these are the entities or the terms which are related to one dimensional motion position or path length displacement speed velocity acceleration time interval so these terms you have studied in the previous chapter in detail right is yes, what is displacement the shortest distance between two points you can observe this is the origin o here now the car is at point x o to x this is what shortest distance between two position two points so we can call it as a displacement when displacement is compared with respect to time then we can call it as velocity and when velocity is compared with respect to time we can call it as acceleration about these terms you have studied in detail in the previous chapter and also you have studied about equations of motion you can remember there are three equations of motion so which are the three equations of motion that is first one s equal to ut plus half at square second one v equal to u plus at and third one v square equal to u square plus 2 as about these three equations you have studied in the previous class and also you derived these equations using graphical method and also you have solved some numerical problems based on these three equations and these are called equations of motion which are related to one dimensional motion is it clear then in one dimensional or straight line motion of a body you are able to represent all these entities all these entities means displacement velocity acceleration speed position time all these entities we can represent on this number line using number line we can represent all the entities related to one dimensional motion so this is a number line you already studied in your high school about a number line system a number line this is a number line it has an origin o and the measurements to the right of the origin this is the right side part of the origin which is taken as positive and to the left side or the left part we can take it as negative this is what a number line and this number line is used to represent all the entities for example displacement velocity speed acceleration we can represent using number line only for one dimensional motion and by adopting a proper sign conventions 
sign a convention means for example if object is moving along x axis positive x axis right side of this origin of the number line if that object is moving on the right side of this number line we can take it as a positive if it is moving opposite to that that means if it is moving along the left side we can take it as negative these are the sign conventions if we are adopting a proper sign convention for all the entities then we are able to solve the problems analytically is it clear remember about motion in a straight line you have studied in the previous chapter in detail remember whatever the terms related to motion in a straight line or one dimensional motion easily we can represent using this number line and also we have to adopt some sign convention when it is said to be positive and when it is said to be negative if you adopt the proper sign convention number line system is used to represent all the entities related to one dimensional motion before we proceed to the next topic that deals with the two dimensional motion of a body that is motion in a plane we need to involve a new way to represent these entities remember in one dimensional motion we are using number line system to represent the entities related to motion of the object but when it comes to the next topic motion in a plane we have to learn or we need to involve a new way to represent these entities remember the number line method will not describe or it will not represent all the entities in a two dimensional motion so for one dimensional motion we can use a number line method to represent the entities for two dimensional motion number line method is not used to represent it is not sufficient this will not adequately describe or it will not represent these entities so to fulfill this need a new way which is called vector representation vector representation is used remember motion in a straight line there we are using number system motion in a plane number system is not sufficient so we are using a new method which is called vector representation so before going to learn about motion in a plane first we have to learn the basics of scalars and vectors is it clear yes two dimensional motion two dimensional 2d two axis xy see here you can observe this picture x y axis we can consider or y z or z x anyhow if the object is moving in a plane it is called two dimensional motion two axis two dimensional which is called plane right so here in two dimensional motion we are using the method vector representation so this method is used to represent all the entities displacement velocity acceleration these entities can be represent using vector representation in two dimensional similarly in three dimensional three dimensional means a three axis so we can call it as a space for your syllabus you are going to study only about two axis two dimensional about one axis one dimensional you already studied in the previous chapter before going to learn about motion in a plane we need to learn about the some basics of scalars and vectors this is the brief introduction regarding the chapter motion in a plane so in the next class we can study about the basics of scalars and vectors